Gentlemen, welcome back to the T.J. Hanley Starting a Business, Building a Brand Vlog. This one, big number 146. So today we're going to talk a little bit about, catch up to speed, about what has been going on a little bit at T.J. Hanley and what has us, at least it has me, super frustrated. Um, not at T.J. Hanley, but actually let me adjust this a little bit. All right. So, where to begin? So, okay, give you a brief overview because it's kind of been a little while since I've given you sort of an update. Um, everything is going really well at Teach Hanley. We are adjusting and moving people into their, their appropriate roles. Um, I should say we are defining people's roles and jobs a little bit better. Um, I, I mentioned a few weeks ago about this EOS system of, of running a business called, you know, it's based on a book, it's the Entrepreneur's operating system and so we've started to implement that a little bit we've 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 made some progress in terms of conducting our weekly meetings a little bit better um, before it was like an hour and a half meeting of like everybody just kind of like going around like a round table and sort of talking about what they're doing sort of the the rocks or their accomplishments and and what issues they have and so we have started sort of condensing them and giving them a little bit more structure so that we better utilize everybody's time. Something else that Rob Kelly and I did was we had an hour and a half meeting um, last week and really went over sort of our, our, our goals, our, you know, what Tej Hanley means to us. And it's all part of this, this, this EOS system. And, and without knowing exactly like who we are, where we want to go, and, and a sort of like the 10 year plan, which was crazy to actually think about. Um, you know, we, we, we sat there and we all kind of agreed on, on sort of a, a, a what T. Shanley is and where we want to go as a business and as a company. But it was the first time, like, we've really sat down and thought, like, long term, like 10 years. Like, when we think about the fact that we've only really been selling T. Shanley now for two years, it seems like an eternity, right? Like, it seems like we've been doing it forever because we've had so many things changing and so many different iterations. But it also seems like a blink of an eye. It seems like we just started. But trying to sort of think and plan like three years in, in advance, like, okay, we can kind of do that based on, you know, numbers that we have now and where we're going and how we're growing. But like trying to like throw it out there like 10 years, that's super sort of abstract for me anyway. And I think for all of us, it was a little bit challenging, but we, we came up with a, an idea and, and okay, well, this is the 10 year plan. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's cool because without a direction, without us knowing exactly who we are as a business, as a culture, as a company, it's very difficult to sort of tell everybody else and to get people to buy into our vision and our dream for Tiege Hanley. And that is critical, right? It can't just be me, Rob, and Kelly and the chemist idea of what Tiege Hanley is. It's got to be the entire team. Um, but something I just want to talk about with you is something that we've been kind of struggling with. So tell you a little bit of backstory. So every single month we have we have projections, right? We've got projections on a daily basis. We've got goals that we want to hit on a monthly basis. And we've got an end of the year goal in terms of like how many like active subscribers we have. And so throughout the year, we've been like hitting it, right? It's like, okay, we're on target. We're on target. We're on target. Well, for the past like month, we've been slow. We haven't been hitting our, our, our numbers. Now, when I say not hitting, it's not like we're not hitting it by like thousand. We're hit, we're not hitting it by by a little amount, but not hitting a little bit each month adds up. And so we're like, what the heck is going on? We're doing promotions and and we're 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 trying to you know figure a lot of stuff out. And what we've kind of come to realize through some research and Akin has has um, has really sort of been spearheading the the investigation because Akin is our marketing director and a digital marketing marketing director and he's always in there looking at data looking at information and he saw that when we we released acne there's a correlation between sort of things kind of like dropping in terms of like our site load time wasn't as fast and just a lot of different things were going on and so we're in the process now of investigating but what we've kind of concluded some there are some issues. There are some issues with our website. There are some issues with with our technology. Um, and like I mentioned a few weeks ago, 
we are in the process of working with a new company to actually redevelop our, our website. And the whole premise behind this is we've got to get our, our, our mobile conversion rate up, right? Because mobile, a lot of people are going on their phone to Tiege Hanley and it is not converting as well as we know that it should be and not as well as desktop. And so we're looking at all of this and, and it's so frustrating for me, right? It's so frustrating the fact that, you know, I put out this content, I'm, I'm doing promotions and I feel so much responsibility on my shoulders to hit the numbers that we need to, to hit. Now, now that being said, you know, Akin is here, you know, we're doing a lot in terms of promotions. There's a lot of other influencers. I'm a small, not a small, I'm a piece of the greater marketing picture. But it's very frustrating for me and for the entire team when we know that there's this like this this like issue with our website that we're trying to work on, we're trying to develop, we're currently and actively trying to fix some of the things that we have discovered happened around the time that we launched Acne. But it's very frustrating. It's 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 hard because it's like, well, you know, it's just hard when you don't hit the numbers. And for me, I'm such a a goal-oriented person that when I don't hit and we don't hit as a company, I feel personally responsible for that. And so trying to figure out what I can do differently, what I can do to sort of help and, and, and feeling like my hands are tied a little bit because you know, no matter how much I promote, no matter how much I try to get the Tiege Hanley word out there, you know, there's something that is not right with our technology. And so you know, it's also still kind of frustrating you know, for all of us that, that technology is such an integral part of our business at Tiege Hanley to think that we're still like we to think that we still struggle with this and I mean I guess this is the business lesson is that you know you you've got to constantly readjust you've got to constantly like you know look to improve your business but if there is you know one of the core fundamental aspects of your business you know isn't working as well as it should you got to figure out a way to fix it and so we are we're trying to fix it but what happens as a result of us hiring this other agency to sort of put you know to develop this new website it's put a lot of, it's put a lot of other things that we've wanted to do and that we've been talking about and and planning it's put it on on hold because why are we going to try to implement certain things if you know at the end of the day in four months we're going to have a new a new car it doesn't make any sense for us to deploy any resources trying to implement some of these things on our old site. It's kind of like putting turbo boost in an old like an old car that you're planning on selling in in 3 months. It's like why are you even going to go through the headache or the hassle? Yes, it might do something a little bit in the in the in the short term, but long term, it just doesn't make any sense to to invest the money or the time or the resources. And so, you know, one of the things that I, I've mentioned on this vlog that we're all sort of excited about is we've got other products that we've developed that we wanted to roll out to our customers and we wanted to roll out this year and it looks like we're gonna have to wait I don't know if it means that we're going I don't know that we're gonna be able to get it done this year and that really sucks because you know these are all things that we've been talking about in terms of like our development pipeline for better you know new products and and just rolling out additional you know things for you guys you know, the fact that it's got to wait it really sucks you know the fact that we've got some of these products that are already developed that are so freaking amazing that you guys would love that that we've got to kind of wait on and so it sucks I'm just gonna say it um, but it's 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 part of it and and that is part of the the picking and choosing and and doing the best that you can with the resources that you have and so for me, I think the, the sort of the point that I want to kind of talk about a little bit is the way that you handle adversity in your business and the way that you handle these little things that come up because here's the thing, there is no straight line to success ever, ever. You're going to have roadblocks, you're going to have speed bumps, you're going to have tech issues and you're going to have landing page and load issues and, and, and you're going to have things that are going to come up. 
But how you handle them as a company, how you handle them as an individual is going to be the difference between you ultimately being successful and you just sticking your head in the sand and, and, and being like, oh, I don't know what to do and, and this sucks and, and I'm going to run and hide. How are you going to handle it? Are you going to give up and just be like, oh, we got, we got the shit end of the stick or are you going to figure out the best solution, the best game plan to move forward? And so that's what we're doing as a company. I mean, everybody, and here's the thing, every single person at T. Janley is busting their ass like super hard. I couldn't ask for anything more. Rob couldn't ask for anything more. Kelly couldn't ask for anything more from any of our people. Like everybody's doing a stellar, spectacular job. But you know, we've got issues that we got to work on. We've got things that we, we, need, to, we need to work out and, and we will continue to do that. Giving up isn't an option, right? T. Janley, we know where it's going long term. Um, you know, we're still going to hit, like mark my word, we still are going to hit our numbers by the end of the year. Come hell or high water, I am going to figure out a way to make up for these, this, this soft month that we have. And that may mean an extra promotion. That may mean, you know, an extra Instagram post. It doesn't matter. As a business owner, I'm going to do whatever it takes, whatever is in my power. I don't have power over the technology. I got no idea, right? I have no power over a lot of these aspects. But what I can control and what I can take ownership in is what I can do for T. Hanley to make sure that it is everything and anything that we, we possibly want it to be. And now that we have a three-year goal, now that we have a 10-year plan, we don't necessarily have a plan, we've got a goal. Like the plan and the goal, like they're to two totally different things. Um, but, but I can control me. And for me, I am competitive. And for me, I am so committed and driven with this business. And I believe in it with every ounce and every fiber of my being that this is going to be the next big thing in men's skincare. I got to do whatever I can and giving up is simply not an option and I hope for you giving up isn't an option you know because when you're committed to something you know the truth is you're gonna have crappy days and and this week I had a really bad Monday like it was it was a Monday I don't know, either way it was it was a horrible day and you know, it was, I, I made an Instagram post about it. I said, you know, whoever said that, that if you find something you love doing, you'll never work a day in your life. Well, well, that's not true. Whoever said that, I think somebody actually commented on the post that it was true at Kathy, the founder of Chick-fil-A, who is, is, who has attributed that quote. Whoever said that you'll never work a day in your life is absolutely lying. Here's the truth is that when you find something you love, you're lucky because you found something you love. But the, but the truth is that you're going to work your ass off. You're going to work harder than most people do because you can't afford to have it not be successful. And so, yes, I'm doing something that I love and I wouldn't do anything different. I wouldn't do, have it any other way. But some days are going to feel like work. Some days are going to be harder than others and it's okay. It doesn't mean that you pick the wrong thing. Thing. It doesn't mean that you won't be successful. It just means that there is no shortcut. There is no easy way to success. Sorry. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm on a roll. He, he totally screwed up my, my, my groove. But you're going you're gonna to have bad days and you've got to honestly and ultimately just, just pick yourself up when you fall down. And, and move forward, but never for a second should you think that you pick something wrong because, oh my gosh, this is work. Oh my God, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to bust my ass. I'm gonna have to stay up until 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock, or I'm gonna have to not go on vacation or whatever it is. This is the truth and this is the reality of, of being in business for yourself. You've gotta make the hard choices. You've gotta do the hard things that other people are not willing to do because guess what? I'm going to outwork a lot of people, right? And this is one of the reasons why I am going to be successful. I've got a mission. I've got a goal. Kelly, Rob, everybody on the T. Hanley team is, is, is going above and beyond what is required of them. And the reason is because everybody believes in the mission. Everybody knows what's at stake. And if we're successful, everybody will be successful. And so it's up to you. How are you going to handle adversity? For me, I choose to take it head on. I'm going to, I'm, I'm, I'm bringing it, right? And I hope you, you decide to do the same thing. You know, we're having a tough, 
tough, frustrating, you know, month. But it doesn't mean that that you know the overarching feel. I'm a popular dude today. <laughs> All these people. I'm not popular. I'm not, I never get phone calls, <laughs> and I got two anyway. I just wanted to tell and, and talk to you a little bit about that because it's something that we're dealing with. And I'm sorry. You know what? I feel like I've been bitching a lot on this vlog and, and sort of, you know, not bitching, but just like talking about some of the downsides. But this is a reality. I mean, we started this, this vlog. It was to show you sort of the behind the scenes of, of this is what's going into starting this business. This is what we're dealing with. And it's pretty amazing, in my opinion, that that we have chronicled. This is 146 weeks. We have documented the entire process of us starting this business, Tej Hanley. And you know, I don't know of any other company that's ever done something like this. And not that this is like a social experiment or anything like this, but it is. It's different. And the fact that you get to sort of see sort of our frustrations and you're just getting my perspective, right? You know, I think that it would be helpful if we had other people like Kelly and Rob and the whole team like being more involved in this vlog and maybe we can figure something out. Maybe next week, you want, next week, do you want them to handle it? How about we do that? Next week, I'm going to shoot it up to Chicago. The vlog is going to be, <laughs> they're gonna, they're gonna, they don't even know I'm doing this. The vlog is going to be run by HQ, somebody. I think Josh will put him in charge or possibly Tom B. Um, just to get an update from everybody. Next week, it's Team Tej. That's I'm excited because I miss everybody. And, and, and I just want to hear from all of them sort of what's going on. We've also got some new team members that you've never met. So they're, <laughs> they're team members that I've never met in person um, that, that have sort of joined the team since last time we've been up there but uh i'm excited but now let me actually see if there are any decent not decent they're all decent any business questions that i can answer real quick for you medrin efan i'm sorry for butchering your name buddy has a has a question specifically for me and and my video editing um he says what do you think about hiring someone for to do your video editing should be able to find one for a cheaper price because um, your few hours a day probably make you more money than an editor costs and this is a thousand percent accurate and something that I have been aware of I have been sort of thinking about for a while in terms of editing because I for those of you who don't know I still edit my videos and it takes anywhere from two to three hours a day um, pretty much Lately, I've been because I've I got a lot of stuff going on right now. I've been editing until like 11 o'clock at night, and um, it's it's tough. I do you know five videos a week, six videos a week. Um, there are a few issues with with me hiring somebody to do my editing. I don't know that anybody would able be able to actually put together one of my videos because I don't film the way that most people film. Most people when they film a video, they turn on the camera and they do it and they talk and they screw up and they start again. I do a lot of jump cuts and so I'm constantly using a remote control and I have like in, in any like one video I'll have like 120 clips and I know like how to piece it together I can remember like where I was but for somebody to actually have to go through that and and decipher it it would take somebody like hours to go through that and and then sometimes like the clip that I want to use is not the last clip that it, it would be a disaster to let somebody else try to do it. The other thing is I just I still love it and I feel like like part of I just love I love like that's part of the process that I fell in love with was editing my videos and creating the video and so yeah you know it would be a lot easier if I could like trust me if I thought that I could just be like here you go handle it and pay somebody a few hundred bucks to edit a video I would do it in a heartbeat because yeah it's it's a few hours of my day that I that I you know have to sit there and, and edit um, but at the end of the day I I don't think it's I, I just can't give it up and so unfortunately it's it's or fortunately that's part of my secret sauce I feel and so I know a lot of my friends you know, have given it up and, and have other people editing, but I don't know. For me, I'm still holding tight. <laughs> I, I am resistant to change. Next question. Nick Welch has a great question. He says, Alpha, what do you and Tej guys recommend doing with savings? I'm in a position to save a lot of money this year and I'm wondering how to maximize my savings. <sighs> I am not giving anybody any advice or investment like tips. Like that's something that, that I'm still trying to figure out, right? Um, 
you know, diversification <laughs> is, is something I personally really like real estate. Um, I feel like real estate is, is, I understand real estate, you know, the market, you know, I have money personally in like, you know, the S and P and, and, you know, Vanguard. And then it, I've got, you know, some other wealth managers that sort of help me like, I don't, I just don't like it. I don't feel like I have any control over that, but I understand that like, it's good to, to have money in different places. Like I'm the worst, I am the worst person to ask about this. And I also, you know, have personally, I've got, you know, I'm sitting on some cash that I, I think, okay, if, if the recession comes or something happens or this, this, you know, economy kind of goes down, I'm going to be in a good position to grab some incredible assets at a really cheap price. But am I losing? Is there an opportunity cost? Me not being in the market with some of this money? Absolutely. But I don't know. I don't feel comfortable having everything in like, you know, an investment fund or anything like that. And so I, uh, diversification, is that the best advice? And I don't know what the other guys do, to be honest. Um, you know, I don't really talk about this sort of stuff with, with, um, with Kelly or Rob or, or any of my friends really. Um, but it's something that I'm constantly thinking about. And, um, you know, I invest a lot of money into my businesses though. I mean, so that's, I, I hired an employee. Um, you know, one of my other companies, I hired somebody, you know, six figures, uh, they, they get as a salary. I know, you know, that's something that, that I love doing and, and that is hiring people because, you know, it, it just, it helps, right? And that's almost like an investment um, in, in your business. And so, you know, you spend a little bit of money here, it's not money in your pocket, but in the long term, you know, it helps grow like every, so anyway, I don't know, man, this is me trying to beat around and dance around the bush. Congratulations, work hard and save your money um, and get better advice than, than coming and asking this guy. Um, talk to a professional, talk to friends and family that, that have money. One of the issues I would say is getting advice from like a financial advisor, they're going to be like, yeah, just put it all right here. And that's not necessarily the most sound advice. Um, you know, find somebody that, that might be more of like a financial mentor to you and, and ask them for whatever tips or advice, or maybe they can make a recommendation, but I'm not the guy. Tej Hanley, invest in Tej Hanley. <laughs> Actually, an investment in Tej Hanley is investing in yourself. Gentlemen, if you haven't tried the most amazing skincare system in the history of skincare, what the heck are you waiting for? If you're following me here, you better have that handsome ass face covered with Tej. Guys, there's a link down below. That link is going to be special, not just the regular Tiege. We're giving a discount. If you want to try Tiege Hanley, see what I'm doing here. I'm trying to get our numbers up a little bit. Yeah, I need your help. Guys, link below. Go grab some Tiege today and look more handsome tomorrow. We got acne now, which is incredible. Level one, two, three. You've probably, probably heard about Tiege and how it all works, and I would love for you to try it. Guys, thanks so much. I love you. We love you. But next week, them, Chicago, it's on you. Right here. Oh, yeah. Have fun, boys. I make it look easy. Gentlemen, we love you more than our double monk strap shoes. Down in the comments, if you've got any business related questions, let us know. Start it with business question, and I'll make sure to get some in two vlogs from now. Maybe Kelly or somebody, maybe Kelly or the team could answer a few business questions. I think that would be fantastic. If you've got a question for Kelly, down in the comments, say, Kelly, business question. That would be amazing. And put him on the hot seat. But he definitely is a smart guy and has some good things to say. Guys, thank you so much. We love you more than our double monk strap shoes. And they will see you next week.